You can run, but you can't hide from the fastest animals on the planet. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme speed freaks in the world and comparing them to human attempts to race their way into the record books. Strap yourself in because you're in for a wild ride when you travel to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places. And extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual and the most extraordinary on animal planets the most extreme. Our countdown begins deep in the jungles of Central America. The basilisk may not look much like an athlete, but if this lizard gets a fright, it can really move. But this is no ordinary sprinter. The basilisk is number 10 in our extreme countdown because it can walk on water. It may take a miracle for a human to walk on water, but the basilisk relies on the laws of physics. For a start, the basilisk doesn't walk. It sprints at an amazing seven miles per hour. And running on water requires some special footwear, according to biological educator Paul Hahn. They have these modified scales on the bottom of their feet. And if you look very closely, you can see the dark little spots. Those are modified to grab little parcels of water to be able to float them over the top of the water very briefly, holding on to the surface tension. And there's not very many animals that would be able to pursue an animal that is able to do that. So that's quite amazing. So long as the basilisk moves fast enough, it can run over the surface of the water as if it were solid ground. Anyone who slapped their hand on water knows how hard it can be. For centuries, people have been trying to find ways of walking on water like the basilisk. Leonardo da Vinci was one of the first to put his mind to the task. Unfortunately, he was too busy painting to test his design. 500 years later, someone finally got round to making them, and they were hardly worth the wait. Even when you're up a creek with a paddle, you're still no match for a basilisk. If we wanted to copy the basilisk, we'd have to grow feet the size of open umbrellas and take 20 steps a second. But walking on water is hard work. It's an escape tactic adults leave for the young and energetic. While older lizards may prefer swimming to running, our next contender is also extremely fast. Not underwater, but underground. Number nine. You have to get up pretty early in the morning to catch number nine in our countdown. And today, that's exactly what's happening in the Australian town of Crow's Nest. For today is race day. This parade is for the support crews of the most unusual racing animal in the countdown. It's the worm. 
The highly trained racing worms of Crow's Nest are subject to rigorous veterinary examinations. And then it's off to the track. Worm racing is simple. First one out of the circle wins. Worm racing has a lot of advantages, according to race organizer Jeff Close. We're very proud of our little worms. They're friendly little fellas and kids can race them and they don't bite and they don't bark and so we've gone for worm racing. This year's winner was said to have come all the way from Egypt. But you don't have to travel to exotic locations to find champion racers. The masters of limbless locomotion live right under our feet. Worms are number nine in our extreme countdown because they're the fastest thing on no legs. Worms have to chew themselves a tunnel. How'd you like to eat your own weight in dirt each day? And who needs legs when you live in a burrow? Worms just need tiny bristles to grip the wall as they push themselves through the soil. And earthworms can travel fast. 52 feet per hour may not sound very extreme, but you try wiggling that far through solid ground without using your arms or legs. But another kind of worm has started burrowing through cyberspace. And it's so fast, it can race around the world at the touch of a button. A computer worm is a kind of virus that travels at extreme speed thanks to email. And when it burrows into a hard drive, terrible things can happen. One of the most infamous was the I love you computer worm. Hurtling through cyberspace, this worm took only a few hours to travel from Asia to America. And while the real racing worms of Crow's Nest may lack the speed of their computer counterparts, they can still hold their heads up high. For an animal with no legs, they show extreme speed. Although some will never be quick enough for the early bird. We've sped past the first two contenders, but as the competition heats up, we'll smash all the records. There's no escape from frighteningly fast fish on our race to number one on Animal Planets, the most extreme. Number eight. At number eight in the countdown is an animal that has to run for its life. The hare has an impressive track record of extreme speed. It has to be fast, just to survive. But how fast is the hare? How would it stack up against the fastest human athletes? If the hare entered the Olympics, it would be chasing human sprinters that could run at 22 miles per hour. But that's no problem for the hare. The hare can hit a top speed of 45 miles per hour, which would mean it would win the Olympic 100 meters in a time of just five seconds. Such extreme speeds would be useful in another famous race. A hare running at full throttle would be able to keep pace with the horses running in the Kentucky Derby. So how can hares run so fast? After all, horses and humans have much longer legs and much more muscle.
Well, for any competitor, extreme speed comes from two things. How fast you move your legs, and how long your stride is. Top athletes may take around four strides each second, and so can the hare. It's just that the hare can cover so much more ground with each stride. The hare carries much less body weight than either a horse or a human, so its muscles can push its body much further every jump it takes. The hare is also extremely flexible. This means it can maximize its stride length by stretching out those powerful back legs and then bringing them up in front of its chin. That's how the sprinting hare covers the ground so much faster than we do. Each hop can cover almost twice the distance down the track. But there is one way we can extend our stride length. Strap on a pair of power walkers. It's amazing how much faster you can run if you stride like a hare. By extending the length of our legs, these super stilts let us cover far more ground with each step. So simply by taking bigger strides, you can power past all opposition. The extreme speed of the hare can get them out of all sorts of trouble. But they're still a whole lot slower than the next animal in the countdown. We've raced through three animals on our way to find the most extreme speed freak on the planet. But coming up, we'll discover there's only a fraction of a second between the quick and the dead. That's next on Animal Planet's The Most. Number seven. So just who is the fastest draw in the West? For the cowboys of the Wild West, extreme speed was the difference between life and death. It only takes two tenths of a second for the fastest gunslingers to draw and shoot. But the cowboys have competition. This is one of the fastest claws in the West. But you won't find the mantis shrimp walking the main street of some dusty western town. This varmint hides at the bottom of a fish tank. The mantis shrimp is number seven on the countdown because it's a real sharp shooter. It doesn't pack pistols, but it uses clubs to knock its opponents senseless. Those front legs move as fast as a speeding bullet and cause about as much damage, according to Australian Museum scientist Dr. Shane A. Young. The strike of the mantis shrimp is one of the fastest known animal movements. Uh, it's completed within about five milliseconds, which is five thousandths of a second, and that's faster than the eye can see. It's been measured to approach that of a small caliber bullet, so the power is quite remarkable. If you're a crab, the only chance you have to escape from a mantis shrimp is to, is to run before it sees you. It's not 
not just crabs that suffer at the hands of a mantis shrimp. Anybody who's tried to pick up a mantis shrimp quickly learns why it's nicknamed the Thumb Splitter. And it's even got a reputation for destroying expensive aquariums. But believe it or not, the mantis shrimp still isn't the fastest claw in the sea. That honor belongs to its cousin, the snapping shrimp. It's not as big and dangerous as the mantis, but it's quicker on the draw. The snapping shrimp is armed with one huge claw. In the past, people assumed that when the ends of this claw clicked together, it created the snapping noise from which the shrimp got its name. But the snapping shrimp has a secret weapon. When scientists took a closer look at the snapping shrimp's incredible claw, they discovered the snapping noise wasn't caused by the pincers slamming together. When the shrimp closes its claw, it shoots out a jet of water that moves so fast, it creates an air bubble in the sea. When this cavitation bubble implodes, it creates a massive shock wave and a loud bang. The snapping shrimp uses this shock wave like a stun grenade to knock its prey out cold. So how would the fastest claw in the sea compare to the gunslingers of the Wild West? It's time for a showdown at the OK Coral. The snapping shrimp is almost a hundred times faster than the best gunslinger in town. The world's top athletes would try just about anything to win a gold medal. They've got high-tech suits, scientific training regimes, and space-age shoes. But what they really need is a pair of these legs. The ostrich is the fastest thing on two legs. Sure, it may look a little ungainly, but the ostrich would leave our fastest athletes in their dust. miles per hour, they're more than twice the speed of our fastest Olympic sprinters. We'd need mechanical assistance just to keep up. An ostrich runs as fast as an Olympic sprint cyclist. Ostriches belong to a group of flightless birds called ratites. All ratites have long legs built for speed. After all, they can't fly away from danger. 
Humans could never run like an ostrich without some extreme surgery, according to Mike Archer from the Australian Museum. What would we have to do as humans to keep up with these gigantic, fast-running ratites? What if we wanted to catch them, eat them, or whatever, or get out of their way if they're predators? We'd have to redesign ourselves fundamentally. We'd basically have to give ourselves shrimpy little warty arms that would sort of dangle up in front of our chests, little bitty things. We'd have to get rid of all these big muscles at the top and put all the effort on the thigh bones, thunder thighs. Human sprinters already have thunder thighs. Their bulky leg muscles are made for powerful acceleration, but they can only maintain top speeds for very short distances. Long distance runners are much leaner and meaner. Their skinny legs have muscles that can work for a long time, but they generate slower speeds. The ostrich is the perfect athlete. Its leg muscles combine the strength of a sprinter with the stamina of a marathon runner. The ostrich can maintain twice the speed of the best human sprinter for half an hour. But the ostrich's long legs have another use. These birds are also the undisputed dancing champions of the savannah. Although, not everyone's so impressed by the male's sexy legs. Even with those amazing legs, the ostrich still only finished number six in our countdown. That's because coming up next, we'll discover that speed kills. And what deadly assassin lives inside these shells? Find out next on Animal Planet's The Most Extraordinary. Number five. These marine biologists are on a fishing trip with a twist. They're trying to catch up with one of the fastest fish in the sea by towing a specially baited camera. At this speed, no ordinary fish could keep up. But the mako shark is no ordinary fish. The ultimate underwater predator has extreme speed. It's 10 times faster than the best Olympic swimmer. And that's why the Mako powers in at number five in our countdown. It can swim up to 30 miles per hour, which is faster than we could sprint on dry land. We can't swim as fast as a shark because we don't have the muscles driving the sideways sweeps of that enormous tail fin. But we can copy its design. This is the new sport of fin swimming. With the help of an artificial shark's tail attached to their feet, fin swimmers generate much more power. And this results in a 70% increase in their speed through the water. But the shark also manages to swim faster thanks to its sandpaper skin. The scales on the skin serve to channel water over its body. This reduces the friction between the scales and the water, so the shark swims faster. And now, so can we. All you need is a swimsuit made from a synthetic replica of shark skin. It's covered with a series of tiny channels that can reduce drag by as much as 10%. That's a big advantage when gold medals are won and lost by just tenths of a second. We may be able to copy the shark's skin and tail fin, but we're still a very long way from swimming as fast as a shark. 
It's that extreme speed that makes sharks so fascinating and so deadly. But believe it or not, there's another predator in the sea that can kill you quicker than a shark. Find number four in the countdown, lurking in tropical waters around the world. It's an animal that moves really fast. For a snail, it may look harmless, but hiding inside that shell is a deadly assassin. For this is a cone snail. It's a hunter that stalks its prey with a poison dagger. Cone snail is number four on our countdown because it stabs with extreme speed. But it injects a deadly poison that moves even faster. If you could travel with the poison inside the fish, you'd see it speeding straight to the nervous system. The poison molecules jam the nerves, stopping the signals responsible for moving muscles. It means the fish is completely paralyzed. And all this happens in a fraction of a second. But fish are not the cone snail's only targets. These innocent looking shellfish are wanted for 70 deaths around the Pacific. A U.S. Marine based in Guam was posing for a photograph with two cone snails when both simultaneously struck him in the neck. He died in just four seconds. So next time you see one of these assassins in the water, just remember that speed kills. We've raced past killer snails, speedy sharks, and ostriches in overdrive. But coming up is the fastest thing on four legs. That's next on Animal Planets The Most. These people are heading to Foothill College in California to watch an extraordinary athletics event. Today, track records will be broken. But it'll take a law enforcement officer to measure the extreme speeds. These competitors have a natural advantage, for they come equipped with sophisticated footwear, and they're extremely aerodynamic. The athletes running today are cheetahs. They're competing in a race to raise money for the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Their extreme speed will also raise more than a few eyebrows. That's because the Cheetah is the fastest thing on four legs. It's three times faster than the best human sprinters on the planet. In fact, the Cheetah's specifications are more like that of a racing car than a track star. It can go from zero to 70 miles per hour in only four seconds. The cheetah really is a high performance racing machine. It 
It has to be quick, because out on the African savanna, the cheetah has a taste for fast food. It's the cheetah's advanced engineering that gives it the edge. Its engine is powered by an enlarged heart and lungs, and air-cooled by the largest nostrils in the cat family. Its chassis is lightweight and flexible to ensure the greatest stride length possible. And cheetahs are the only cats that always have their claws fully extended. That's because they need all the traction they can get as they race for food. We could learn a lot from the cheetah's design. We may not be able to grow bigger hearts or lungs, but we can improve our footwear to help us run faster. That's what Mario LaFortune does at the Nike Sport Research Lab in Oregon. We are collecting information about the motion and motion of the foot with respect to motion of the legs. When we are talking about sprinter, we know that in the first 30 meters per second, they have to build up from a zero velocity to 12 to 13 meters per second. And all of the propulsion takes place under the fore part of the shoe. Therefore, we are positioning the cleats there so that they move and they can really apply that a lot of force that is going to accelerate them to run faster and faster. the Cheetah Grand Prix, people are waiting to find out which cat is the fastest. Shaka is the favorite for this year's meeting, but Zulu will be pushing for pole position. No one knows the form of the two racers better than trainer Don Simus. Shaka is larger, so he has a longer stride. Zulu is shorter, we always expect her to be slower. She always does better, and I think it's because she's lower to the ground. As an incentive, the world's fastest mammal chases something small, fast, and colorful to guarantee maximum speed. First on the starting line is Zulu. Fifty miles per hour is a disappointing speed. Can Shaka do better? At 67 miles per hour, Shaka is the winner. And his reward is the same as the first Olympians. Back in ancient Greece, the Olympics were a little different to today's competition. For a start, all the competitors raced in the nude. The Greeks believed that clothes just got in the way. That's why the word gymnasium comes from the word gymnos, which is Greek for naked. And the naked athletes didn't compete for lucrative sponsorship deals. The winners received nothing more than an olive branch and a free dinner of meat. And while Shaka also dined on meat, our next contender feeds on speeds that blow all competition out of the sky. extreme speeds, you have to take extreme risks. Spiraling down to Earth with only gravity to assist you 
it's possible to reach speeds of 100 miles per hour. But you might as well be standing still compared to the speeds reached by the animal hurtling in at number two in the countdown. It's the Peregrine Falcon. A 200 mile an hour power dive makes this the fastest animal in the sky. Most parachutists are happy they don't dive like a falcon. After all, the lower speed means they can open their chute and not have the impact rip their shoulders off. But some people are looking for the ultimate head rush. Welcome to the extreme sport of speed skydiving. Competitors wear special suits to reduce wind resistance and aim head first to the ground, falling as fast as a falcon. Of course, the tricky part is slowing down enough to be able to open your own parachute. But peregrine falcons don't slow down until they hit something. Mid-air collisions are devastating for anything that takes to the sky. Airplanes and birds just don't mix. In America alone, collisions with birds cost airlines an estimated $500 million a year. No wonder people take extreme measures to reduce the problem. Commercial airports and air force bases have recruited a special breed of fighter to patrol their airspace. Meet Tom Steffen. He's not the pilot. He's the ground crew for a real Top Gun. Brooke, the Peregrine Falcon. Brooke and Tom create no-fly zones around airports. Their job is to clear the area of flocks that cause bird strikes. But Brooke isn't a killer. She's been trained to attack Tom. And we lure fly the falcon. We, we get it to dive at, at that effigy of a bird with meat tied on it. And they repeatedly stoop at it, they dive at it. And the birds in the area see that. They know that falcon is working and is hungry. And so they leave. This demonstration of power is enough to scare the local birds into the middle of the next county. Brooke really does have the right stuff. But not even Brooke can keep up with the number one animal on our countdown. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one animal moves faster. It's number one. And it's coming up next on Animal Planet's The Most. You can find the most extreme speedster almost anywhere on Earth. It may be the fastest thing on six legs, but it still can't outrun St. Louis Zoo entomologist Jane Stevens. Tiger beetle. The tiger beetle is a pocket rocket, the fastest insect on Earth and probably one of the most ferocious. 
Tiger beetles got the name probably because they're predacious in many ways. I've seen adult grab a hold of things as a tiger would and sometimes a sit and wait posture as tigers might do. The tiger beetle uses its incredible eyesight to pick out a target. Then it takes full advantage of its extreme speed to run down its prey. So just how fast is a tiger beetle? If you put a tiger beetle on a racetrack, it would sprint at the same speed as a human out for a brisk walk. Now five miles per hour doesn't sound very extreme, but imagine if it was the same size as a human. It would take only half a second to win the 100 meter sprint. To catch a beetle moving at over 300 miles per hour, we'd need a drag racer. But there's a problem with being the fastest sprinter on the planet. Tiger beetles run so fast, they go blind. Watch a tiger beetle hunting, and you'll see it sprint and stop, then sprint and stop. Those enormous eyes work well when the beetle sits still, but once the beetle starts running, its eyes can't process information fast enough to see its surroundings. The tiger beetle is the number one most extreme sprinter on the planet because it's literally running blind. Imagine what it must be like to be a tiger beetle. When you sit still, you can see perfectly. But then you take off and you have to search your surroundings again. Locked onto your target, you take off, and your eyes just can't cope. You go blind until you stop, search, and start again. This is an extremely unusual way of hunting. But when you move as fast as the tiger beetle, you have to find some extreme solutions. No wonder this is the number one sprinter in our countdown. After all, when it comes to speed, the Tiger Beetle really is the most extreme. Superheroes of the animal world, so powerful, so indestructible. Guess which of these guys came back from the dead after a hundred years? On the next episode of Animal Planet's The Most Extreme.